Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the, whoopsie, at the McKinney DS-6. DS this is an emergent, emergency door stop is what it is. The only time I ever see these are in patient rooms and hospitals, but you will, I think, always see them there. This is a piece of equipment that um, is um, McKinney's offering of an emergency stop. Okay, so looks confusing. You know, once in a while I'll get a call from a general contractor or a project manager who works for a GC and says, help me understand this. I'm completely confused. Yeah, <laughs> it took me a year to figure it out the first time, I'm pretty sure. The bottom line is this. In, if you take notice of such things, whether it be in a patient room, in a hospital, or in a common bathroom, in a common hallway, you'll see, certainly in patient rooms, but also in those common restroom applications, you'll see these emergency stop applications. Basically, here's what the opening is. Patient room, bathroom of the patient room. Privacy without really having privacy. You have a door, it swings in. Whatever hand it is, it swings in. Great, it's got a lever on it, it's got whatever it's got on it. Um, it will be hung on hinges, it will be hung on pivots, it doesn't matter. Patient goes into the bathroom, closes the door. Got it. In a typical installation, right, door goes, swings in. I never, I, well, I do see him swing out. I do, I definitely see hospital uh, patient rooms swing out, but those instances where they swing out, you would not need this device. But when they swing in, what happens is, I was just recollecting that the last hospital I was in, they, those patient doors swung out, uh, those restroom doors. Door swings in, patient's inside, closes the door. Some emergency occurs where the door is blocked. The patient is in front of the door. Conscious, unconscious, whatever the case might be, whichever the two. Unwilling, I suppose. It would be awfully nice if you can get that door open with emergency stop hardware and the sister products from McKinney that go along with it allows you to now swing that door out. You don't care if anything's on the inside preventing your blocking, blocking you from pushing the door in. You don't have to do that. Hit the button, door swings out. Now you have full access. And that's what this does. Bottom line is this. We were just, um, we are doing it like this, weren't we? This is the back end of the stop so this was my door door swings in door closes door swings in door closes right against here door is closed and I can't push it open if I hit the trigger over here it's going to retract everything that action is going to hold that unit back until I snap it closed because what happens is this this relocker or unlocker articulates enough to hold it in that retracted position in that retracted position until I touch it and kind of just m move it back as I push okay I want to get that door open can't get it open I've got a 300 pound patient inside of there unconscious can't get it open I'm gonna depress that now my door is gonna wham come right out I've got full access and I'm in that's the bottom line that's where you use emergency stops for um, you will very often see this piece of hardware, let's talk about its sister products, the related products to it. You're going to very often see this with um, McKinney's EP5J pivots. Um, you're going to very often see these with double-lipped strikes, is where you'll see them as well. I'm stammering because I'm trying to find the product catalog. because I want to talk about the other parts that go with this, or, or normally will work with it. You're gonna, and in these applications where the door is gonna swing in and then swing out, you obviously aren't gonna be hung on hinges. You'll be hung on center pivots at that point, okay? So you'll have an EP-5J center hung pivot set from McKinney. 
you are going to possibly then have a um, CSS-9 offset or center hung double lipped strike. Imagine in the environment where you do have that stop installed and your door can technically swing in or out. You've got the latch bolt of the privacy set grinding across the face of what, a face of what would be a cased opening frame because that's what you have to have. You can't have hinges. You can't have a rabbited frame because your door needs to, in an emergency, swing the other way. That will require center hung pivots where the vertical axis of pivoting is down through the thickness of the door that will allow a 0 to 90 back to 0 to a negative 90 movement. The double lip strike will allow the latch bolt to just ride across the face of the frame of that cased opening frame and it's double lipped it will go the entire depth of the frame with a couple of lips that hang out so when that's manufactured the factory has to know what's the jam depth they need to know that so that the length of the lip extension or the lip length is correct for the jam depth if you try to try to stick a five and three quarter prepped one onto a frame that was you know seven and an eighth jam depth it's not going to work obviously i don't think you'll have seven and eighth <laughs> So in that application because that would be fire rated and this would not of course be a fire rated application. Um, so the pivots, the emergency stop, and the double lip strike will all conspire to make a complete opening. So in your mind's eye just imagine these pieces. You've got something in the frame that will permit you to bypass it to swing the door out. That's the emergency stop. You've got to have center hung pivots. That's to permit the door to swing in and out. And then you are probably going to have a double lip strike so the latch bolt of your privacy set doesn't scrape on that frame once you've pushed in your emergency stop. That's it. So below this video is a link to the cut sheet or product catalog for the DS6. And that's handy because you can review uh, all of the stuff about it. Let's do so now. Recommended for installation with the EP-5J pivots in schools, hospitals, institutions, and other public buildings. Um, I can't say that I've seen these installed in timeout rooms, but that could be a really good, it, it, that may be a good application for such a device where you can just swing the door out uh, in that application. Um, the unit allows center hung or eighth of an inch inset to be opened in both directions without damaging the frame. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Used to convert double acting doors hung on center pivots to single acting doors. That would be another application for this. Let's say that you did have um, doors that were originally designed to swing in both directions. That's no longer what you want. There may have been a replanning of the space and the way that traffic moves and you can't have a door swing out into the flow of cross quarter traffic. You might, you might implement something like this to be an auxiliary stop to make that work. It's not the only sort of device that would work. Any sort of a surface applied strike um, stop would work. Very heavy weather stripping would do the same job basically as well. Wouldn't allow you to reverse the direction of the door though. Um, mortise only on the frame. This would be mortised to your frame and we'll talk about that when we get to the template. Latch releases with the touch of a finger. We've demonstrated that. Second touch of lever returns the latch to the original position. We've also demonstrated that. Available in brass material, polished and plated. This is 26D, this finish. Uh, the definition of 26D does not tell us anything other than it's satin chrome. The fact that it's non-ferrous tells me, and the fact that the description tells me it's brass. This will be a brass-based material with a satin chrome fit, a plating on it. I have a touch of clear lacquer applied to it as well, would be my guess, and is uh, accepted by the New York State Office of Mental Health for high-risk areas. So that's the cut sheet. Now there's also a couple of templates down below as well and let's look at those. What's nice about these templates is there's two of them. Your door is either center hung or it's inset. Your door doesn't have to be hung on center hung type pivots to be center hung I think what they're referring to is that the position of the door is in the center of the frame okay um, you could have you could be on hinges in that sort of regard because they're calling it center hung but what if you had an inset that was two inch 
Okay, now 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 by that definition it'll be center hung. But when your door is kicked into the center of the frame, they're concluding that it's center hung, and that's certainly what it's going to be. Um, versus inset, and they are saying edge hung is what they call it. Bottom line is this: when you stand on the pull side of a door, a hollow metal door, an aluminum storefront door, the door to your bedroom, whatever it is. Stand on the pull side and run your hand over the face of the door and the frame. And there will be a dimension that the door sets into the frame that you can detect. That dimension can be zero. It can be flush. Aluminum storefront is very often flush. A commercial hollow metal door will be inset like 332nd of an inch, a very small amount, 100 thousandths basically. You could have, uh, you know, a building built in 1860 uh, where it's three stories tall and the thickness of the walls on the first floor are 18 inch because there was no steel <laughs> to get <laughs> higher than three stories without the first floors collapsing. Your doors are going to be kicked in substantially. Your inset will be substantial. But that's the definition I'm drawing to. You need to decide which of the two templates you're going to use. At that point, you're going to have a dimension A and a dimension B on both of those and you will derive um, where you're going to place this as a result of your dimension A and dimension B. Let's focus on the center hung uh, as the template to look at because that's probably what you're contending with. They're certainly going to want, and they are absolutely concluding that you're hung in the center of that frame uh, by virtue of these dimensions. So do be mindful to double check that. Your dimension B is going to be your door thickness. Okay, so select the column for inch and three eighths or inch and three quarters, probably inch and three quarter, right? It's most typical that you'll probably have a five and three quarter frame, but not necessarily. You could have something else. So you'll see that your dimension B for an inch and three quarter door uh, on that template is going to be from the face of the frame on the stop side, okay, to where you're going to you know what dimension that's going to be how far this is in from what would be the pull side of the opening okay that's your dimension B dimension A is your frame size and they're defining that there so depending on what the frame size is that's where you go for dimension B pick your two door thicknesses and then locate accordingly a five and three quarter jam depth for an inch and three quarter thick door is going to give you 23 30 seconds of an inch from the face of the frame to where this face plate is going to start okay your door swings in it's that simple okay so this is assuming that you're field prepping this uh, or forgive me no one's gonna field prep this this is for the hollow metal frame manufacturer this template uh, it'll tell that that individual where to place it. The only thing I don't see is where they're going to want you to have the height of this installed down onto. Um, I don't see why I would not want the center line of this at the center line of my lock prep. Um, I don't really think the projection of the bolt at all is going to cause any sort of trouble. You know, basically 9 16 at the most. So I would probably place it You need to get your finger in there to get that pulled back. So how far your trim is going to reside in this area, you have to be careful of to be able to fit the finger in there. Uh, they're not giving a vertical dimension. Um, if there's going to be a conflict, the vertical positioning this, of this will have to be scrutinized. Overall height of the faceplate is four and a half inch. Overall width is one and five eighths. Okay. Thickness of the material is 134 thousandths. Coincidentally, that's the thickness of a hinge leaf. Uh, this does not look as thick as a hinge. Let's put the soothsayer on it. Let's see what the teller of truth says. Caliper says 0 0.14. 0 0.14 inch is what that is. Okay. Uh, they give the rest of the dimensions for the body depth, inch and a quarter, uh, inch and basically inch and three eighths overall deep. Okay, inch and seven sixteenths. 
little plastic box back here protecting the inner mechanism obviously the spring that will be inside of there okay now that's the center hung template looking at the offset templates the only thing that probably will ought to change is going to be that b dimension column so five and three quarter jam depth for an inch and three quarter door goes from 13 30 seconds or forgive me 23 30 seconds i've already forgotten to two and 19 30 seconds of an inch so you're just going to position it accordingly that's going to be based on an eighth of an inch inset i believe i don't see the inset defined on this page i must be missing it somewhere um it would be safe to assume a standard inset for a hollow metal frame with a wood door or a hollow metal frame with a steel door i would confirm that you do have an inset of about 332nd of an inch or about 096 0.096 inch if i didn't if for some reason i had a flush position i would increase my b dimension by about 332nd of an inch whatever your inset is on a standard frame i would increase the b dimension by that um, if you don't i mean we're, we're not even talking an eighth of an inch i don't know that anyone will, will would would take exception to that um etc so you are going to have your gizmo you're going to have your screws flat undercut i bet they're 1224 yeah they are indeed 1224 flat undercut head you see the underside of the head here is undercut it's flat head then undercut that's to get a big screw onto a thin piece of material and that's what this is for um used in applications where you need to be able to get somebody out uh, it's not funny uh when grandma gets caught in the bathroom it does happen i remember it happening uh, in my great grandmother's home when I was a child, and it was a, she was fine. She was laughing on the inside of the bathroom. She just felt foolish because she couldn't get the bolt retracted. You know, later in life, of course, I learned how poor of an installation the latch bolt and the strike plate were, which caused her to not be able to turn the thumb turn on this home built in 1908 and pull that latch back. Um, but it was a, three alarm fire so to speak in my family all the uncles all the grand uncles pulling pins out and it's a family full of carpenters um luckily it was it still is um but that's the concept of getting somebody out of the bathroom and that has to be thought about and that's where this family of mckinney products come into play you know, I, perhaps you need to be a hardware person to really be in a hospital and say, oh my gosh, I get to see hardware that I don't see often in the wild. But that's where, where you are really going to notice it. What's really great about hardware is the fact that it doesn't make itself obvious to you as the user, but it's working behind the scenes, so to speak, to make everything as safe as possible, whether it be rescue hardware like this, emergency release hardware, rescue hardware, or it be uh, 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 ligature resistant hardware, whether it be hardware that has been tested for fire rating to be safe to, to withstand the rigors of what a door frame and its constituent hardware would go through through a fire emergency, helping preserve life is the bottom line. And this hardware you know, serves that same type of purpose. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the McKinney products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Fun fact, McKinney once upon a time manufactured Division 10 or commercial restroom equipment. That stuff was for sure discontinued in the real early 1990s. Um, but you will very occasionally have someone call you up and say, I need a spindle for a toilet paper holder. What do you have? It says McKinney. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to 1989. On that manufacturer's page, we have uh, some archival uh, catalogs there as well. Old catalogs showing McKinney uh, type hardware. That would be neat. Certainly if you're doing some research on hardware from pre-World War II, uh, or also just to edify yourself to scroll through some stuff that 
you might only see in silent films. Any questions on the McKinney DS-6 emergency release or any other McKinney product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.